Hey everyone, my name is Devin Townsend and welcome to GuitarMessenger.com. Here's where I will begin talking about my guitarish goings ons. I think that the instrument that you first become proficient at or choose or ends up being your instrument of choice ultimately um, defines the way in which you write music. I do play an equal amount of bass guitar as I do six string guitar and although the process is similar it's a little different because bass is coming from the role of support but with guitar itself you've got the option of rhythm and you've got the option of lead right so everything that I write uh, again other than a few isolated bass moments are based on me riffing out at home or you know hanging out with people or sitting on the stairs or whatever and then my hands end up finding notes and melodies that uh, are representative of these moments of emotional significance to me, right? So when I work, I work with Pro Tools, I work with Logic, I work with Ableton Live, I work with all those standard DAWs and um, what usually happens is I start with a click track, I start to jot down ideas that I've either documented on my phone or on you know a handheld recorder and then I see where it leads and the melodies that for example I wrote with Deconstruction or ghost or anything that is not even a guitar, or a vocal or a violin melody or whatever, all still are uh, initiated with guitar. So I guess the whole point here is that no matter what your instrument is, you're going to be able to compose with it, whether it's guitar or piano. But on the other end of it, the instrument that you choose is ultimately going to sort of define your approach to music, I think. And guitar is, you know, it's rock and roll, so there's always going to be an element of that to what I do. So in terms of tuning, um, I've always been in an open major chord. Uh, the example that I'm going to be using today is actually an open B, which is uh, different than I have done typically in the past. I've always been an open C, but I think what happened is um, a guitar was left in the sun or something and it ended up dropping down a pitch like either the wood shifted or the neck moved and I ended up picking it up and it was in B without me actually even being aware of it and then I wrote a bunch of songs in B and then now I've got a bunch of songs in B as well so typically my guitar was C, G, C, G, C, E which is an open C major chord but you know about half and half now is so it's you know B, F sharp, B, F sharp, B, D sharp right same thing down a half tone, right? The reason why I chose this tuning, I guess, is uh, a couple things. First and most obviously was Led Zeppelin with the song Friends off of Led Zeppelin 3. The song meant a you know, great deal to me as a young kid and uh, after struggling to learn it in standard tuning and I ended up in the open tuning, I just found that uh, either I was too lazy to change it back or what have you, but I ended up writing a bunch of songs in that tuning and so yeah I've stayed in that to be honest I can't really play much in standard tuning now at all right the reason I like this tuning so much is because the way I write always for the most part includes a lot of layering and the reason I like to layer is because I've always sort of thought of things in an orchestral sort of sense I've always liked you know uh, John Williams or you know Trevor Jones or any of the kind of orchestra things, Stravinsky, all those sort of things. And uh, so in this tuning, I use octaves pretty much exclusively while I'm writing riffs. The reason I use octaves is they don't define a tonality. So if the melodies in my head are meant to be minor or augmented or diminished, if I've got the roots being played by the rhythm section, then I get a really solid foundation on the bottom of the actual root note and then I can fill in the tonalities with all the other shit right like your vocals and your 
uh, keyboards and your ambience and your orchestras and whatever. <laughs> So now the reason I've chosen to wrote riffs like that as well is as a singer it's easy for me to like do this without having to do these elaborate sort of chord shapes for the most part. It's not saying I don't do the chord shapes because in this tuning your standard power chord shape that you'd have in standard tuning becomes a suspended. And if you wanted to do sort of like a standard power chord on the lower strings it's, that's actually not standard at all. So as a singer, it's very easy for you just to be like, yeah, 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 right? And then when it comes to doing, you know, more lush sounding things, you can get to the. When I do improvisation, one of my favorite musicians ever was Ravi Shankar, and uh, I mean, I'm nothing like him, but the thing that I do draw influence from that instrument is the sympathetic ringing of the strings, so a lot of times what I've done as a musician is I rely on the ringing of the strings in order to kind of work uh, my riffs together. And by that I mean also the echo, I use echo on basically everything. I like the idea of the last note I play affecting the next ones, and I use a lot of echo, so. In this tuning, the way that scales and arpeggios work, I mean, it's pretty uh, simple, I would imagine, compared to standard tuning. Each string is basically the same thing, as far as I can tell. I don't really know theory, like at all. I mean, in fact, when we were doing the orchestral stuff, they'd be like, well, is that a C sharp? And I'm like, well, it's seventh fret. So, yeah, that didn't really help. <laughs> but to do a major scale, for example, you could do like, And if you did it minor, just bring it down. So it's an easy way to kind of get those sort of, what is that word, scalar sort of shapes going because throughout the neck you're just kind of like rolling on Similar shapes, right? Same with arpeggios. What you end up having with uh, this tuning is it's the same principle, you know, it's 
the same shape on two strings repeated up to the highest string. I very rarely use the highest string except for cer certain examples. So it's like a, a very cool way to kind of make shapes, you know, like I remember pissing around with them at one point and I made the, with key, the song key, the uh, melody ended up being really like. When I was 15, I think what defined my connection to, to technique is I, you know, I wasn't getting any sex, and I think as a result of that, I practiced a whole lot. At the time, it was like you know a dick swinging competition where everybody was trying to, you know, outwank each other, right? <laughs> I was very fortunate when I was 19 to hook up with Steve Vai and I played with him and sang with him for, for several years. Uh, Steve's an incredible guitar player, a fascinating musician uh, and incredibly theoretically proficient, you know, like he really knows his instrument, he knows his notes, he knows what he's playing, he knows why he's playing it. That was never actually me. I have no idea what I'm doing and I think that's in a lot of ways been very liberating for me because there's nothing, there's no rules to break if there's no rules, right? So what I found with technique is after a while of playing with people who were better than me and uh, who really knew what they wanted to play, I found that I became uh, tired of technique and the incessant sort of practicing that I was doing to come along with it. And I go through phases now and I'm actually currently going back into a phase where I'm practicing again and I'm interested in guitar again but for the past eight months I've been doing nothing but playing bass you know and I think that that's the interesting part of the instrument as well is when you when you're interested in it the notes come easily to you in terms of lead playing and when you're disinterested in it it becomes strictly a songwriting tool but I think in order to actualize the ideas that you have in your head to know theory and all that time I spent when I was a teenager, you know, like whacking off and learning how to sweep pick was probably uh, a really good thing in hindsight because when we went and did deconstruction, I mean, there's a lot of really difficult things to play on that record. So uh, when those ideas came to me, when I was writing deconstruction, I was able to do it, you know, and I think that that ultimately is like incredibly liberating as an artist to have the faculty to do it. So it's a dual-edged sword. I think you should practice your balls off, but at the same time, I very rarely find a place in a song that I think, well, there's a great place for a bunch of wanky guitar. I mean, I'd say for me, 98% of the time, some sort of creative melody is much more satisfying to me and for the song. Than <laughs>